Practice my subdivision supreme picking workout for a little while and I guarantee your groove will be deeper, your hands will be more in sinker, and you might even win back a little bit of respect from your stepdad. <laughs> Well, howdy there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. You guys are all the time asking me for the best workouts that you can do to get your hands more in sync, reduce tension in your playing, and build up some speed. And I'm a firm believer that any kind of exercise that incorporates speed bursts is really the key to making all those things happen. So in order to get the next generation of young Shred Eye Knights the skills they need, I designed this daily workout which uses a combination of eighth notes and triplets. It's built around the good old fashioned one, two, three, four chromatic exercise, but the shifting subdivisions make it a lot more trickier. And the more you understand all the different subdivisions, the more interesting and groovy elements you can add into your playing right away. Also wanna know, what's your favorite picking exercise that you've ever done that increased your speed and precision on the old guitar? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon. Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even at just a $1 a month level, gets access to a ton of stuff to make this valuable workout part of your daily routine. For starters, I'll be uploading the backing track that you heard at the start of this video at a variety of different tempos for all skill levels, from pep pep speed all the way up to a brisk real dad speed. Those practice tracks start off down at the first position, then creep all the way up to the 12th fret and back down again for a full fretboard workout. I'll also be uploading the MIDI file of that practice track, that way you can drag it into your DAW, put it whatever tempo you want to, and use whatever kind of instrumentation you think is best. All that stuff plus downloadable tabs, even for just a low cost of a buck a month, so be sure to head on over to patreon.com slash benellerguitars and start reaping the benefits today. Gear-wise today I'm using this lovely PRS hollow body straight into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. Yeah, first things first, let's talk about the two rhythmic subdivisions that we're going to be using in this exercise eighth notes, meaning two per beat, and triplets, meaning three per beat. Now the way that my first guitar teacher, the legendary Benjamin Franklin of Morristown, Tennessee, helped me understand eighth notes was like this. He put on a metronome and had me tap my foot. Now he said that whenever my foot was on the floor, that was the downbeat. One, two, three, four. And whenever my foot was up at the top of its arc, one and two and three and four and that's where the upbeat is. That kind of automatically helped me understand where the downbeat and upbeat is and helped me play eighth notes tighter. So if I was to play the good old fashioned one, two, three, four chromatic exercise as eighth notes against the metronome here, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. The other subdivision that we're going to use is triplets, which means that we're cramming three notes into every beat. A really good way to understand how triplets feel is just to turn on a metronome and try to enunciate the three-syllable word triplet in between every beat. Triplet, 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 triplet. Now, if I played that good old-fashioned one, two, three, four exercise, but with a triplet feel, triplet, 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 it sounds like this. In this workout, we're gonna play that good old-fashioned chromatic exercise as eighth notes for four beats. One and two and three and four and. and then we're gonna go back to where we started, the low E first fret, and play four beats worth of triplets like this. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. Four beats of eights, four beats of triplets. One and two and three and four and. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. So now that we've played both different grooves starting from the low E string, we're gonna do the same idea starting from the A string. So four beats of eights. Then again, start from the A and do four beats of triplets. 
Next, we're going to start that idea from the D. One and two and three and four and back to the D. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. And lastly, we're going to finish this out by starting from the G. At this point in the workout, what you're going to do is to shift up a fret and play the same idea but walking down the string. So we're going to be starting off here at the high E string, fifth fret, four beats worth of eighth notes. One and two and three and four and go back to the high E. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. Then we start on the B. One and two and three and four and one palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. G, one and two and three and four and one pilot, two pilot, three pilot, four pilot, and lastly the D. One and two and three and four and one pilot, two pilot, three pilot, four pilot. At that point, you're just gonna creep up off of the first finger, walk up the third position all the way, creep up off the little finger, walk down the fourth position the entire way. You're gonna play that all the way up to the 12th fret, and then we're gonna climb all the way back down the neck. Also, if you're using the MIDI file I'm providing over on my Patreon page, that means you can do this workout in any tuning that you want to. So let's say you're the kind of player that keeps your guitar tuned down a half step all the time. You can take that MIDI file, grab every note, knock it down a half step, and play in the tuning of your choosing. Now as you guys practice this, I want you to really concentrate on your accents, which are extremely important. I was born with this silly southern accent, and that's worked out pretty well for me but it's important to become really versatile with all kinds of other accents in your playing. As you practice this, I want you guys to really focus on accenting the downbeat with a harder pick stroke. So every time you're playing on beat one, two, three, or four, really nail that with an aggressive stroke of the pick. It's really gonna help you stay locked into the groove and add a lot of dynamics into your playing if you practice this way. On the tab I provided on the Patreon page, I circled the accent notes in red, that way you can see them. Now the eighth note ones are pretty obvious. One and two and three and four and. Those are always falling under your first and third fingers. And those all fall on downstrokes, which makes it a little bit easier to keep track of. But whenever we move over to the triplet subdivision, this gets a little bit more complicated. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette. So you can see the accents are all over the place in there. The first one is on my first finger, the fourth finger, third finger, second finger. It's kind of like the groove is traveling across the hand as you play through that. And also, maybe even more difficult, is the fact that some of those are gonna fall on downstrokes and some of them are gonna fall on upstrokes. A lot of guitar players, they just concentrate on accenting their downstrokes all the time. And don't get me wrong, that's important, but you also need to be able to accent those ups too. One palette, two palette, down palette, up palette. So really listen right here, and I'm gonna accent the crap out of those downbeats so you can get an idea of how this should sound when you're practicing it. Again, accent the downbeats. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. When you play that way with those strong accents, you can really feel the groove happening over here in the right hand, emphasizing those downbeats all the time. And at that point, your right hand kind of becomes like the metronome that you're playing to. You know, you stay really locked into the groove whenever you play that way. And I gotta mention too, this is an excellent exercise to get your legato really in shape and in time. A lot of us rush and push and pull all over the place whenever we do hammer-ons and pull-offs, but if you're practicing this exercise along with the tracks, it's gonna really help you make sure that you're getting a lot of groove over here in this hand too. Whenever I practice this legato, I'm just gonna pick the first note on every string and let the left hand take it from there.
again, that is a real challenge. It's so much harder to do than it sounds because whenever we do hammer ons and pull offs, your fingers just kind of want to go as fast as they can, you know, especially those pull offs. You just kind of want to rip them like that. But to have to really tell that left hand to slow down and stay in time and stay in the groove with those different subdivisions is really, really tough. But you'll find that this improves everything. It's not just about improving your timing when you're doing legato, it also improves your timing whenever you're doing fast picked licks too. Because if this hand's rhythm sucks, it's gonna make a perfectly trained right hand suck too because they're not gonna be in sync. Whereas if you practice this both ways with picking and with legato, it's gonna get both arm hands super groovy. And around here, we like super groovy. Whenever we play the eighth notes, we're playing two notes per click, and then we accelerate and play three per click for the triplets. I'm a huge fan of exercises like this that feature you playing at a more relaxed pace and then kicking it up into a higher gear and playing a little bit faster, constantly going back and forth between those two. It's a really great way to help us monitor any tension that creeps into our playing when we start playing faster. For most tempos, when you're playing the eights, you're probably gonna be pretty relaxed. And then when you go to the triplets, this is where I want you to really watch and see if you change anything in the way that you're using your hands. I want you to see if you grip the pick tighter when you accelerate. I want you to watch over here and see if you start pushing down on the notes harder when you accelerate. And a lot of times tension manifests itself at higher speeds in other ways too. Like sometimes I see players that really hunch their shoulders up when they start playing fast. Again, that's tension starting all the way up here. It's definitely gonna affect your hands. Sometimes I see players that lean forward into their playing or even take in like a really sharp intake of breath or even stop breathing entirely when they're doing something difficult. You don't want any of that stuff. You want to feel just as relaxed as you are when you're playing the eighth notes all the way through. So as you're constantly accelerating and decelerating right here, I want you to really monitor your body's tension level and see if anything is changing whenever you ramp it up to the higher speed triplets. And if you do notice some tension creeping up into your playing whenever you accelerate, try taking this exercise down to a more manageable tempo and see if you still do it there. So if you're starting to tense up whenever you play triplets at 120, maybe try backing the whole thing down to 100 and see if it happens there. If the tension is still happening, then back it down to 80. Whatever tempo you find where you're constantly relaxed all the time while you're playing those different subdivisions is where you need to be today. So after you find a good comfortable tempo, then just slowly and gradually work your way up speed wise in a couple BPM increments. This is a problem that a lot of players have whenever they're working with a metronome. They increase by too many BPMs at a time. Look at it this way, it just takes a little bit of math to figure this out. If you're playing triplets at 100 beats per minute, that means you're playing 300 notes per minute, right? Now if that's too easy for you and you decide to say ramp it up to 120, think about that. That means now you're suddenly doing triplets at 120, which would be 360 notes per minute. You turned up the metronome by 20, but you increased the notes per minute by 60. That's an extra note every second that you're now cramming in. As you practice this, I think it's really important to record yourself, even just on your phone or something like that. That way you can listen back and really objectively evaluate your playing. I want you guys to really make sure that you're not rushing whenever you go to the triplets. I see a lot of players that have this sort of natural inclination to want to cram all four notes into every beat, which is not what we're going for here. We're trying to play triplets. Triplet, triplet like that. So make sure that you're not rushing whenever you go to the triplets, and then when you go back to the eights, make sure you're not dragging and really slowing the tempo down by accident. So I want you to try to find a tempo to start with where you can play everything super cleanly and really relaxed and slowly work it up from there. Run through that entire workout using the practice tracks I provided on the Patreon page all the way from fret one to 12 and then all the way back down every day for a week and I guarantee you're gonna see some results. I've also developed some other variations on this exercise that feature other metric subdivisions and stuff, so if you're interested in seeing videos based on those, let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new content coming at you every single week, and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. Get even more out of this lesson with those practice tracks as well as a bevy of backing tracks, bonus lessons, and downloadable tabs over on that Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but now it's time to go practice. Less clicking, more picking.